this movement that we are in is called a struggle. Because we are fighting for our lives. To America. Uh, I'm amazed at America. To America. I wanted to ask you, because I know there was a little bit of time between when you all finished this film and were able to release it, just kind of what that was like for you and having it released at a time where it really is so just as relevant today as it you know, would have been in the 60s. Unfortunately, in our history, American history, things just keep repeating themselves um, and not really the things that we want to repeat themselves. <laughs> Um, and so we felt like no matter when this film came out, it was going to be timely, but we couldn't have predicted that this would be, no one could have predicted that we would have the year that we had. Um, you know, we wanted to get this film out uh, right before the elections, but we weren't able to do that. And it turns out that, um, when you talk about just these past few months, last week uh, made it clear that, yeah, we were right from the beginning. It's, it would have been timely no matter when it comes out. So I think it'll make uh, equally strong, if not stronger uh, impact now than it may have uh, made if we were able to release in October. Yeah. Minister Malcolm X. Good news, the chariot is coming. Definitely moments on set when we were filming this where we, where scenes just took a turn and went in a completely different direction than we had planned. And I feel like, you know, one of those moments was around the table with me and Aldis, uh, Malcolm and Jim. Had, we had no intention of sort of going in that direction and something just happened because of, you know, Regina and the, the, the way she allowed us to work and encouraged us and sh sh shaped the emotional journeys. But there's a moment in the film with Cash and Malcolm where Malcolm bursts away from him and talks about, you know, drawing a line in the sand and, and the black people were being murdered in the streets every day. And something happened at that point. We, you know, remember Regina came over and was like, we got it, you know, and, and there was a real sense that suddenly the, the text sort of came to life in a way that we hadn't necessarily planned or thought about. And then, yeah, we've wrapped, went into lockdown, the world flipped upside down and it was just like, oh my God, we've just made a film that that's really important that we try and get out as soon as possible. And there was a, a real urgency with Regina and everyone to kind of get it cut together. Who's yeah. That's right. It meant a lot to me, especially when I was, you know, during ADR, it was literally days when I did my first ADR and I saw Kingsley saying, you know, black people are literally dying in the streets every day. It was days after George Floyd. So it was, uh, it was a very surreal experience. I mean, I think as black people and as a black man, you know, this is something that's always high stakes. You're always concerned about the police. This is not new. You're always concerned about, you know, violence and 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 these types of things in your community. This is not new, but um, just the way it's kind of exploded onto the mainstream media is definitely, it definitely resonates in a different way. All together, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about code switching because that's something a lot of the characters were talking to Sam about um, doing a lot. And I'm just curious about um, kind of your thoughts on his decision to do a different show for the white people and if that's something that you've experienced at all personally. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, I, we sit in a, a little bit of a, a place of privilege that Sam, you, you know, ba because of Sam's work, because Sam walked, Aretha could run and, and Aretha gave Whitney wings. You can't judge, you know, some of those, some of the, our, our, our ancestors, the people that came before us, right? Because they were they were doing the best, you know, best they could. It pains me to think that there's there was a room, any room in America that would have, you know, not opened their arms to Sam Cooke, that he wouldn't have been accepted. And, you know, for me, because he's my guy, any room that wouldn't accept him didn't deserve him. But he knew that acceptance in the Copa, as you and I both, you know, that was money that's going to open the opportunity for me to make the dough that I need to make around this country and his talent deserved it and he didn't want to be you know he didn't want to be relegated to uh, one section of the business with all the talent that he was bringing to the table one of my favorite things about your performances cast here was 
He's like so arrogant, but I love him every second and I'm totally on his side. Oh my goodness. Cash. On cash? Why am I so pretty? How do you make like a self-centered character likable? You know what? I gotta say, that's just his unique ability. I wish I had that ability in my own life. It's uh, something about the way he speaks and the way he is bold and transparent and vulnerable and honest and the way he backs up what he says. I think some combination of all of that, it just ingratiates him to people. People love him. I mean, I think I think it's funny you picked up on that because I think the same thing all the time is like, man, this guy is so self-centered, but at the same time, he's not because he loves other people just as much as he loves himself. I think that's maybe what works. And I'm only 22 years old. There is no way I'm supposed to be this great. How much weight do you feel as an artist to be using your platform for something else? Or do you feel like you could be content to just be an actor? I'm not really sure I know what my platform is yet. It's been really interesting watching Regina and Aldis and Leslie, you know, and Eli as well, to some extent we're on social media and understanding like, oh, wow, you know what you say, Matt, I'm not on social media, so I don't have that kind of responsibility. I'm sort of engaging in this kind of press for the first time. And mm -hmm. I'm understanding that when you speak, it will be printed and this is all kind of new. Um, I definitely feel as an actor, you know, it's my responsibility to always be interrogating stories and character and trying to bring, you know, as high a degree as possible of humanity to everyone I'm playing so that people can see themselves in the characters that we're putting on screen. You know, decency and kindness and, and being good to your family, like those things are important as well and like really important. How you how you treat other people and, and being consistent in that and just not being a dick, you know, and treating everyone with respect and throwing everything you have into everything. I'm just being grateful for the opportunities and, and and the stuff that I have. I mean, I think if you're doing your job right as an artist, I can't say as an athlete, you know, I can't speak as an athlete, but as an artist in general, or just as a human being, if you're doing what you're called to do, then you're going to have something to say about something that's important to you. And I think you just have to be authentic about that, whatever that is. Um, mm -hmm. People aren't always going to agree with it. It's not always going to be um, what other people think is right or wrong, but as long as you're being authentic and you're doing what you believe is morally right, um, then I think that's that's your that's your responsibility. Well, I thought this would be a wonderful chance for us to reflect on what's happened tonight. Like our young brother said, there's no denying that greater forces were at work. No one else is coming. Well, rest assured, my brother, you're not missing anything. How much of a leap was it going from directing television to film? Is there anything that you had to do for the first time? I just feel like with uh, film, as a director, you just have more control. You you, you um, are making more of the decisions that uh, determine what the overall aesthetic is going to be of the film, what the tone is going to be the film, the rhythm of the film, the casting, all of that. You you know, when you're coming in as an episodic um, guest director, uh, you're kind of coming into a machine that's already in place. But yeah. when you're coming in as a director um, uh, from the beginning, you know, uh, these are all your choices you're choosing the team that is going to go on uh, that journey with you i know that everyone you meet these days is the world's biggest hamilton fan um but i just i just have to ask yeah. was there a moment where you knew that that was gonna become what it is today obviously a special moment is like at the public theater when then first lady michelle obama comes to the show at the public theater she came to our off-broadway show and she she took a picture with us and met with us after the show and said such kind things. That's weird. You know, that's different. Yeah. But then other than that, uh, the history is littered with great art and great artists that were not celebrated in their time. So I didn't know if Hamilton might fall into that category only after we opened on Broadway and we had the confirmation of those box office receipts that you go, OK, I think I'm going to have a job for a little while. Longest job I've ever had, by the way. I worked there for one year. I've never had a job for a year in my life. This ain't about civil rights. They ain't giving black people what they really want. What's that? Hey, I was made in America. That's why I'm out here saving America. Power. Black power. I like the sound of that. Uh.